Hello and welcome back. So far we have developed the applications with the Spring framework without using Spring Boot. That means we have followed the XML approach, annotation approach, Java configuration and the annotation approach. Now it's time to develop the application with the Spring Boot. Some of the advantages like auto configuration you will see in this application itself. But however, moving forward Spring Boot is more than just the auto configuration. It supports the embedded Tomcat server, in-memory database like H2 and also we have facility of actuators. More by default as and when we progress in this entire series you will understand. Now in order to create the Spring Boot project most of the ID supports. If you are going with the IntelliJ idea then the paid IntelliJ idea the ultimate version directly from the IDE itself you can create the Spring Boot application. If you are using the Spring Tool Suit one of the ID for the Spring application 95% of Spring Tool Suit is same as Eclipse. If you are already comfortable with Eclipse even if you use Spring Tool Suit you will not face any issue directly from the IDE itself you can create the Spring Boot project and if you have integrated if you have added the plugin of Spring Tool Suit into your Eclipse in that case from the Eclipse also directly you can create the Spring Boot application however if you have not added right like the way I have not added the Spring Tool Suit in this Eclipse ID so I cannot create directly from the IDE itself now if you want to create a Spring Boot approach in a universal way irrespective of the IDEs you are not dependent on the IDs then you have to open one of the website you have to just search here Spring IO Initializer and the very first website you can see here start.spring.io within this you can create one Spring Boot application doesn't matter which ID you use this is one of the universal approach to develop or create the Spring Boot application I want to develop a Maven project you need not to separately create I need a Maven project or Gradle project at the time of developing or creating a Spring Boot application here itself you can specify which build tool you want to use I want to go with the Maven and I want to use the latest Spring Boot version. The latest Spring Boot version currently is 3.3.5. This is the latest one. Behind the scene, the latest Spring Boot version uses latest Spring Framework. Right now, the latest Spring Framework version is 6. So Spring Boot, latest Spring Boot uses internally latest Spring Framework itself. So the current latest version at the time of recording this video is 6 and the latest Spring Boot version is 3.3.5. Group ID, it is like a package. I'll give it as com.t-shaped, great. And the artifact ID is equivalent to the project name. I'll give it as uh, Spring Boot Application 1 is the name I have given here. And package name by default based on the group ID and the artifact ID, it will be created. And this will be considered as the base package. So for the Spring Boot application, unlike we have done in our Spring application in the annotation approach, we have used component scanning and we have specified what is the base package. For the Spring Boot, you need not to explicitly specify at the time of project creation, you can mention. So whatever package you mention here, that will become automatic base package. That means all the classes which are part of this package only will be scanned and considered by the Spring IOC container. If you create some other package once the application is developed, then those classes will not be considered by Spring IOC container. I want to go with the JAR project and I want to use Java 17. The latest version which you have to use is Java 17. Since Java supports backward compatibility, if you are not aware of the new features of Java 17, 20, 21, you need not to worry on this. Java is a backward compatible programming language. So whenever there is a new feature, it's not compulsory for you to learn that. It's up to you whether you want to learn or not. However, even if you use Java 17 or 21 or 23, whatever Java you already know, that is more than sufficient. That existing Java knowledge will not affect. Fine. Now, Whenever you want to work with any of the module of Spring, then we have an option here, add dependency. Example, I want to work with data JPA. We have to add this. I want to add MySQL database. We have to add the driver from here. Right now, I want to use the core feature of Spring framework, which is inversion of control and uh, dependency injection and all the basic annotations, which we have seen so far. 
for which you need not to add any extra dependency. The moment you generate the project, the basic core dependencies which is needed for your project will be automatically added. You need not to add any extra dependency. Apart from basic core features of Spring Framework, if you want to develop a web application, then you have to add the dependency. If you want to work with actuators, you have to add the dependency. If you want to work with Data's API, then you have to add the dependency. For now, I want to work with the basic Spring Core features which we have seen earlier in this existing. So I will not be adding any extra dependency. So what you have to do is the moment you generate one zip file will be downloaded in your download folders. I will just generate it and one zip file will be downloaded in my downloads. Now what I'll be doing is from the downloads, I'll copy that. I'll copy that and I will get to the workspace. The workspace for this particular application is Spring Boot YT. So I have created in my D drive, I have created one folder by the name uh, Spring Boot uh, YT. You can see here, I would like to show that here. Spring Boot YT. Within this, I will just paste it. So it was there in the download. The moment I have generated, right, it was downloaded. And one more point, in order to create this Spring Boot project, internet connection is required. If you don't have internet connection, then you cannot create this Spring Boot application. Fine. So I have generated. It was automatically downloaded as a zip file. I've got that to this particular folder because that is the workspace I'm working with. Now, I will right click here. Right click. I'll say here, extract all. So extracted. And once you extract it, so you will be getting this project here. It is extracted. Now, I'll go to my file. There is an option called as import. I'll say import, import the Maven, existing Maven project, import existing Maven project. I would like to click it. I will say here next. I have to specify from which folder you have to import. I'll go spring YT and I have extracted one project, spring boot app one. I will click it. This is universal way to create because you're not dependent on the IDs to create the spring boot project. I'll say here finish. The moment you finish, you can see the project is loaded. That's all. Fine. I would like to close whatever we had uh, developed so far, a basic annotation approach application. If you are new to this video, I would suggest you to watch the videos which we have covered. We started the journey from absolute scratch and I am pretty sure if you complete this entire series, you will have a good hold on the spring core, the core of the spring framework. Now you can see guys, we have a Maven project pom.xml which has a dependency spring core will be there by default if you have to check here maven dependencies you can see all the spring boot basic whatever dependencies are there alongside that the other dependencies also added as i have told it's not just about the basic it is more than auto configuration i will discuss that going forward now we do have application.properties file Whenever you have to write any of the configuration, we have to write within the application.properties or application.yaml. What is that? We will see that in detail going forward. You don't need to worry about it right now. I'll go here. We do have this class by default. We have not created. This class is auto-generated when you are creating the Spring Boot application. A class which is annotated with Spring Boot application. The Spring Boot application is equivalent to, equivalent to the component scan annotation which we have used earlier plus the enable auto configuration i'll say here enable auto configuration it is equivalent to these two annotations so let me write here enable auto configuration okay if you want you can open and check i would like to say here at the time of creating this annotation spring boot team has done that so let me just show you here if i have to right click this and open the declaration you can see it is having enable auto configuration and the component scan also making sense. So by default, the base package is com.tshape.springboot.app1. You need not to specify explicitly, automatically it has considered this as the base package. If you create classes outside this package, if you create one more package in .tshape or some other classes, that will not be scanned. And you can see, you need not to explicitly start the IOC container. So far, using the bean factory and application context, we have you know, started the IOC container by our own. Right now, that is not needed. This run method, which is present inside the Spring application class, within this class, we have one static method. Internally, it will only start the IOC container. Auto configuration. We need not to write the code also. That's all. Nothing. It was automatically created for us. And the remaining part will remain same. So I'll do one thing here. I'll go back to my previous application and whatever packages we had, of course, the package should be changed here. So let me create the uh, 
maybe one more package here. The other annotation approach in the last video you have understood. So what I'm going to do here is I'll create a package here by keeping this as the base package. This will be the base package. I will say a dot maybe service dot service. Great. And within this service, I'll create any of the class and you will be knowing it. You know already is what I have kept in mind. Uh, the basic service class here is I would like to give any class. Maybe I'll say here uh, greetings class. Fine. Any class in that matter. It should not be a matter of concern. I'll go back here. And I would like to write one constructor to check if the bean is getting created or not. That is the end goal, right? We have to understand that. So I'll go here and say system dot out dot print ln. And within this, I will say here greetings bean created. And at the top of this, we have to add the stereotype annotation. We have discussed about this stereotype annotation in our video in this entire playlist. So what is a stereotype annotation which I will be adding here is nothing but service because I'm going to write some business logic. That's the meaning of it. It is component plus business logic is equal to service. And as you all know, if you attach service by default, Spring will understand that it has to take care of this class. So Spring will take care of object creation. Through this annotation, we are informing Spring Framework that please create object of this class. If a Spring is creating the object of a class, then we call that as a bean. Fine. Now you can see I have not started. I have to refresh this. Let me just refresh and get it to the proper alignment. You can see I have not started any IOC container. This run method only will start, right? I'll go here and simply run this application. I'll say run as Java application or Spring Boot application. And you can see we are getting some uh, logs. We have loggings here. You can see one of my video uploaded in Telesco YouTube channel, wherein I have taught logging in Java and Spring Boot application. What exactly this is, you can understand once after completing certain Spring Boot videos. Forget about this. Please see here, greeting bean is created. It is created by the Spring IOC container. But did I start Spring IOC container? No, internally it will only start. And the return type of this run method is application context itself. I have not created right. I will just say here container just to show you. You can see container create a local variable of this. You can see configurable application context. So as I have discussed earlier also the default IOC container Spring Boot uses is application context. We do have bean factory and application context. But in the Spring Boot application it is application context which is getting used. And if I have to open this I'll say right click open the declaration. You can see it is an interface extending application context itself. That means it is a family of application context. So I need not to do that. It will be activated by the spring itself auto configuration and to support this auto configuration behind the scene spring boot uses around 52 classes 52 beans. You can check that here. I will say here maybe container container dot I will say here get bean get bean definition count. How many beans are there in the IOC container right now? That count is what I want to get it. I will say here integer type of count. How many beans are there in the IOC container is what I'm checking here. System dot out dot println. I will say here count and let me give one suitable message as well here. I will say here maybe beans count in IOC container. Okay. Which is managed by spring IOC. I would like to go here, right click, run as Java Spring Boot application. And I have to save this, of course. And you can see here the crowd which we are getting is 53. Why 53? Because one of the bean we are also creating, right? So we have asked our spring to create a bean of this particular class. So 52 plus our own bean. So we have asked our spring to create only this bean. But totally how many beans are there in the spring IOC container? 52. 52 plus 1 we are asking. If you create more than 52 plus how much ever beans you as a developer are creating. So totally 52 beans are there behind the scene to support this auto configuration by the Spring Boot. There are many other advantages also. This is one of the advantage of the Spring Boot that it supports auto configuration. You need not to start the IOC container separately, right? You need not to do at the time of project creation, whatever dependencies you want, you can add at that instant itself. You can choose whether you want a Maven or Gradle. Spring Boot itself will create it for you. Fine. So more on this by default as in when we progress in this entire series, you will understand. I have kept in mind you have watched last two videos. 
annotation approach videos please do watch before making it to this video then i am pretty sure you will understand what is the context here so those who are attending from the scratch this entire playlist they could able to understand everything here that how spring boot is better than the spring framework so the latest version of spring boot right now in the market is uh, spring boot 3 and the spring framework is 6 and spring boot internally uses the latest spring framework itself so spring boot 3 and internally it is uses spring boot is spring framework 6 itself so even if you are using spring boot you are working with spring framework spring boot is one of the way to work with spring framework remember this point you can develop the spring application without spring boot with spring boot we have developed so far five to six application without the spring boot now we are developing the application with the spring boot it is easier to work with spring framework if you go with spring boot how it is easier if you have watched the previous videos then you will appreciate this video that how easy it is so i would suggest you to watch those videos so thank you so much for joining me in this video we will meet again in the next video and understand more on the spring boot we'll develop few more application with the spring boot and try to understand better